About one week ago, I took delivery of my 2013 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van. After completely clearing out the interior and removing the decals from the exterior, I was left with a distinct ghosting effect from the outline of the adhesive. I took the time to completely clay bar and buff my van to get rid of the ghosting and make it look brandy new. In this episode, we cut a big hole in the roof and lay our first bit of lumber in the van. Well, good morning guys. Another 6 a.m. morning here. So this time, it's raining out. Well, Swift C is one of those things that's like, not really necessary, but at the same time, it's like necessary, you know what I mean? I'm only putting in one swivel seat because if I put one on the driver's side, I'll lose a lot of my kitchen area because that seat's gonna have to swing into the, the, the area, so you're gonna have to kind of shorten your kitchen galley if that makes sense. I'm only doing the passenger side, but it's gonna open up the space way more. And just kind of one of those additions that's for like, I think I paid 200 bucks for this space and like, it's well, well worth that. Instruction said to remove the D-ring that holds a seatbelt. I think you can do it without it and just kind of lay the seat behind it and let the seatbelt stretch out. So. We'll find that out, but I don't think it's necessary to have to take that out. Ugh. I've been struggling trying to get this seat in literally all day long. I've been on and off the phone with the manufacturer who, who sold me this piece. And basically my problem is that the bolts just like are not lining up. I can't even get them in two bolts like width wise it just isn't the right length basically what this guy told me is that when mercedes builds these seats in these bases there's a little tolerance between the seat track and the base and essentially there's no tolerance with his base so he said my only option because he said this is the right platform this is the right base he's my only option is to drill it down so i've been using like a metal grinder on the end of my drill and you can see it's literally down because i've grinded it so much and that's kind of where I'm at. I've been able to get these two in up here after I grinded those down, but you can see just how little this is actually fitting. So they suggested taking up these bolts that take the base to the chassis and kind of wiggling this around as much as you can, which I've been doing, but really this just is not even close to the proper length that I need. Not gonna lie guys, I am getting super, super frustrated. Either I'm doing something wrong or the base of the Mercedes that I have is completely bent or something, or they sent me the wrong plate. Those are the only three things I can really imagine of what, why this is not working. They said it's just a 30 minute install and it's literally taken me all day. I had to work again today. So I worked on this in the morning and worked and now I'm trying to do this again, um, hopefully before it gets dark out, but. I'm just really frustrated right now. And about a whole day later, I have myself a swivel seat. What a day that was, all for this little swivel seat here. So I'm probably gonna call it here. I'm gonna do a little more work, clean up some stuff, get ready for a good weekend of work ahead of me. So I'll see all you guys in the morning. It has been quite the exciting morning, quite the busy morning. First off, I just sold my old van to a buyer for my full asking price, which is always a great feeling when you get your entire asking price. Ian, whatever watches, but if you do, congratulations on the new van. You're gonna love it, take pride in it. It's only gonna get more exciting for the rest of the day because I'm about to cut a hole in the middle of my van. I made my template here. I'm excited, scared, all in one. Cut this hole, you're gonna need really Three things, I guess. I'm using a jigsaw. You can also do this with like a Sawzall um, or even I guess an angle grinder, but I think the jigsaw is gonna be the easiest to use. You're gonna need a drill to kind of make your holes to, to start the cut and then obviously a nice pair of safety goggles, among some other things. So it's time to climb up on the roof and get this thing going. I have measured this literally about like 20 times, Remeasured it and use this template to kind of See where I want to put it. There's a great spot right in the middle of the van here where there's no ribs. And especially because the kitchen's gonna go under here, this would be a great spot for it. I made sure it was kind of centered off the ribs as best as I could. And now I'm basically just going to go edge to edge here. 
and see if we can cut a square. And now the moment of truth is will this trim piece fit? Money. On the next steps, just for good measure, I'm just gonna kind of file the edges down a little bit and then clean this all up with like an acetone just to make sure there's nothing um, kind of sticking to the surface and then we'll start to kind of secure the rest of the frame. The other thing I wanna do, and again, this isn't absolutely necessary, is usually what's called butyl tape. It's essentially like a roof sort of putty or tape basically that kind of prevents leaks and things like that. So I'm gonna put that on the outside of the, the roof flange, kind of like the trim piece, just for like a double protection for any leaks. And then we'll put that down and then caulk it all silicone just so we're like double, triple sure that we're not gonna have any leaks. We can be in the harshest of weather, snow, all that good stuff. So now just one of the final steps here is just pre-drilling each one of these holes and then just screwing in uh, one of the 16 screws that they give you. And then we can lay the fan on top, screw that in, and we're good to go. So we finally got it in all cocked up, got the fan in. It looks so sick. I'm so stoked. I went with the smoke lid instead of the white to kind of contrast with the rest of the van. So this is what it looks like inside the van. There is a trim piece that comes with the fan. Uh, that will basically cover all these screws here, but this is what got the trim piece secured. So based on your ceiling uh, height, you'll trim down the trim piece. So this kind of all looks nice here. This fan is a lot more heavy duty than the one in my other van. And the reason I went with this one was because one, it's a bigger space. And when you don't have air conditioning, um, these fans really do a lot. And it also has a rain cover. So you can open this and have this going even when it's raining. There's also a lot more different speeds on it, settings. You kind of have it automatically turn on and off depending on the temperature in the van. It's just a lot more, uh, just a lot better fan basically, a little more heavy duty. So I will leave the link to where I got this. I paid 200 bucks for this on Amazon. I'll leave it in the description if you're interested or if you just want to kind of follow along with some of the, the parts that I'm getting for this fan. You know, one part of me is sad to see this van go just because it's like my first first real van I feel like it's, it's super special but on the other hand I know that uh, much much better things are coming and I'll have my van that's completely custom to me so about an hour to empty this entire thing out and get it ready for its new owner. See you, man. Enjoy. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah, see you, dude. Ian, enjoy your new van, man. You're going to love it. I loved it. Treated me well. It's going to treat you well. So smooth transaction. That van's gone. And now all we are left with is the Sprinter van. Spitter sweet. Sunday guys good morning it's about 7 in the morning I'm making a super early Home Depot trip because today's a big day I'm gonna be laying our subfloor insulating all that so I need to get basically all of the supplies and I wanted to come early in the morning before this place gets crowded big Home Depot haul here this is gonna be an expensive one but a very very important one and I'm super excited for this I gotta make two separate trips because I couldn't fit all the lumber and the foam board insulation in the same shopping cart. So I live at a checkout, I gotta go back in there, make a second trip. To reinforce and build my subfloor, I'm gonna use these one by two by eight common common core boards here and then basically get one inch rigid foam board insulation to put in between so it'll fit perfectly with um, the wood that I use for the floor. Tape all that over with, put the subfloor from Mercedes back on and then we have a reinforced floor. I can envision it in my head and now it's just a matter of cutting it and making it work into the van.
Now when it comes to the floor, there's a ton of videos, a ton of different ways you can kind of do your floor in a Sprinter van. I've seen people not even build out any sort of floor and just put their finished floor right over their subfloor. I've seen some people put like just a layer of Reflectix down and I've seen other people build out a complete uh, subfloor. And that's kind of what I'm doing, essentially what I'm doing. And there's two main reasons why I want to do that. The number one is just for reinforcement, to just strengthen the floor. So when you're walking on it, it gets continual abuse, you don't get any sagging or sort of like depressions in your floor system. Them. Then the second main reason is for insulation purposes. When I run the subfloor, I'm going to be able to kind of pop in some foam board insulation and just try to help keep the floor a little warmer in the winter months, especially I want to live in this during the winter and be able to go skiing. So if I can put some insulation down the floor, hopefully um, it'll give me kind of the remnants of a heated floor. Not really, but at least it won't be so cold to your feet when you get out of bed in the morning. So that's kind of the thought. Basically my idea is to run a series of horizontal and vertical sort of furring strips throughout this area to also act as nailers um, for all my framework and my build and my cabinets and stuff, but also um, give me a space where I can put some insulation um, in there as well. So I'm basically gonna start zipping some of these out and then line them up through here. So that is my project for today. If I could smash this out, I would be like ecstatic. It would be such a great week. And even if we don't smash this out, just the fact that we're getting started, uh, we have all the materials here. So um, we are moving right along. laid the first two uh, support beams for the floor here. I'm using a construction adhesive basically underneath to kind of uh, lay the, the boards on. Then I'm just countersinking the holes and then putting in some self tappers to go right through the floor here and just really suck that up. With the combination of that, this is not going anywhere. So super, super solid so far. This is the type of bit you want to use to countersink your holes. Basically what that means is I'm just starting the hole so I can have the screw head be flush with the top of the wood. So when I lay my floor on top of that, there's no like uneven bits based on like the top of the screw head, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of just drilling a small starter hole and then I'll zip the actual screw all the way down through it and it'll be nice and flush with the top of the wood. Now the construction adhesive comes in and this stuff is super messy. I'm just kind of dabbing it on the ribs here on the top. A little blob there. Now we basically just make sure we're lined up here. It's not like the end of the world when you push it down right away, so you do have some area to wiggle it after you double check your measurements. So there we go. I'll just take my tape measure. All good there. A little this way in the middle. There we go. Many, many hours later, I finally have part of this done. The bulk of it, which is the horizontals, like I've been working on, you can see um, here are all the screws countersunk um, and then self tapped right into the frame. I then cut one extra one at the back so my floor can come all the way to the end here. Um, and then I even did a little uh, sort of bevel cut to kind of match the trim of the uh, of the Sprinter van there. I wish I could just finish this and throw this in, but I want to leave time to edit and kind of show you guys where we've been at. So I'll throw the finished product here in the next video. So I appreciate you guys watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments or want to uh, let me know uh, something, please, please drop them below. Welcome aboard to all the new people who have jumped on this last week or two. So thank you guys again. For watching i will see all of you guys in the next episode we're getting close to episode 50 that's pretty crazy so don't fear your safety goggles uh take it easy fam and i'll see all you guys in the next episode peace out Woo!